hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Tilly and welcome to another weekly reading vlog So I actually have quite a bit to update you guys on. So I took a little breather from vlogging for the past couple of weeks and I kind of regress it as I had quite a bit on in those last couple of weeks and I think it could have been fun to vlog it and look back at it for my own memories. So I definitely want to vlog more just so that I can be capturing these moments. The first one is that we went to Brighton for Tim's birthday. We had the best day. The weather absolutely held up for us. I think sunny days in Brighton, I don't think you can get much better than that so we went down to the beachfront and saw the sea i don't know about you guys but i absolutely love being around the sea i actually did a year of uni at bournemouth and i absolutely loved living by the sea i used to do beach walks all of the time and i used to love it being back in brighton felt absolutely amazing and getting that sea air and being on the beach was absolutely lovely we also went to one of our favorite mexican restaurants it's called la Chosa. if you're ever in the brighton area and you love mexican food you absolutely Absolutely have to go here it is quite a small restaurant so I called up ages and ages in advance because there was quite a lot of us there to celebrate Tim's birthday I had the best burrito mojitos nachos oh it was just so so good and then we went to play crazy golf at this place called globals which has all uv lighting tim's nephew is absolutely obsessed with dinosaurs so we did the dinosaur one but again we just had the best time and it was so much fun celebrating his birthday we then went back to his parents house and stayed there with his family played board games and had a nice dog walk in the morning and breakfast and then one of my friends very spontaneously messaged me asking if I wanted to go watch Hamilton in Bristol, which was absolutely amazing. I had the best time. It, the production is just absolutely insane. So I ended up flexing my hours a little bit for that week, so which meant I could finish early on the Wednesday. So that meant that we could go to Bristol and have a little look around the shops and have some food, which was really lovely. And then we went to watch Hamilton, which like I say, was absolutely amazing. It's a show that I've always wanted to watch and I absolutely love the soundtrack. I've watched it on Disney Plus before and really enjoyed it but I think nothing compares to seeing it in person. It was just absolutely fantastic and would highly, highly recommend going to see it, especially as it's currently touring the UK, so you don't necessarily have to go to London to see it. I did actually do a few little vlog clips on my phone, so I might insert them now. just had to get a delivery so apologies if the angle or lighting is slightly different but I've also been preparing for the Eras tour as I've got that coming up in a couple of weeks which again I am so so excited about so I've started making friendship bracelets I am pretty bad they are so fiddly and they are definitely a lot harder than they look to make talking of Taylor Swift I have got what I think is a very exciting parcel and I thought I'd unwrap it and share it with you guys as I know probably some of you guys are also Swifties. Okay, it is what I thought it was. And oh my God, I'm so, so excited for these. So the UK Taylor Swift store had a bit of a sale going on. I think they're trying to shift older stock now that the branding has been redesigned to feature the tortured poets. So the t-shirt was on sale and I just couldn't help myself. I also found a discount code that someone had shared on TikTok, which actually worked. So it made it slightly cheaper. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit worried about the sizing because I've seen from TikTok that the sizing can be a little bit strange. This is gonna be really hard to show you. I'm gonna try and change the angle so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, so I've tried to zoom myself out a little bit so that we've got some room to play with. So I ordered the t-shirt in black and this is what it looks like. Oh, I'm so happy I have Eras Tour merch. You have no idea. So on the front, we've got the Eras Tour branding with the original Eras Tour branding. And then on the back, you have got a list of all of the locations and the different eras. 
including, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but including London, which is right down there. I couldn't help myself and just had to put it on. And I actually think it's a really good fit. I'm roughly about a UK size 12 to 14 and it's just a little bit oversized but I think but I really like the fit of this. Something that I also think is quite cool is on the sleeve it also says the Eras Tour but there isn't anything on the other sleeve. But yeah I'm so happy to have this. I love it so so much. I'm gonna wear this so so much but I also cannot wait to wear this on the Eras Tour weekend. And then whilst I was on the website I also couldn't help myself and I picked up the hoodie. The hoodie actually wasn't in the sale so the t-shirt was on the sale. It was a really good price which if you've seen the Eras Tour merch that is ridiculously cheap. I was gonna wait until I'm at the Eras Tour to buy the merch but when I saw that price I was like I need to get this. Like I was like, I'm never gonna see that at that kind of price. So I was like, I just need to get it. But like I say, the hoodie I got was full price. I just couldn't help myself. And also it meant that I had free shipping. So I kind of justified it to myself in that way. So I got this faded gray sweatshirt that just says the Eras Tour on the front. But then on the back, it's got the Eras Tour branding. And as you can see, this is the new branding with the Tortured Poets. So this is what it looks like on. I absolutely love it. I think it's a really good fit. What I will say is that the hoodie isn't the most amazing quality. It feels quite thin and the lining isn't as soft as some of my other hoodies, unfortunately, but I will still get a lot of wear out of this. I do still intend to purchase the quarter zip, but you can only get that from the merch stands at the concert. So I will be still hopefully, fingers crossed, getting that when I go to the Eras tour. Yeah, like I said, I saw some of it on sale and I just really couldn't help myself. it's now monday apologies for not updating the vlog yesterday i just wasn't in the mood to be filming and i'm also really sorry if you can hear the dishwasher in the background but i do have a few reading updates for you so on saturday night i started and finished the dixon rule by l kennedy i read the synopsis for this book while i was out in bristol with my friend and i thought it sounded quite good as you may or may not know i've read the off campus series by l kennedy and i really enjoyed it and i saw that the dixon rule was 99p for kindle so i got it for my kindle and i I spontaneously decided to read it. What I didn't realise is that it's actually the second book in a series and it is also a follow-on series from the Off Campus and Briar U series. I haven't read the Briar U series yet so in hindsight I probably would have liked to read that series first but I don't think it matters too much. So the series that the Dixon Rule is in, it follows some of the children from the characters from the Off Campus series. So the Dixon Rule follows our main character, Diana Dixon, who lives in this apartment complex and her arch nemesis Shane moves in next door. However, Diana also has a really creepy ex-boyfriend that just won't leave her alone, won't take no for an answer. And when Shane offers his apartment to his ex-girlfriend because she's thinking of transferring to their university, she turns up with her ex-boyfriend. So Diana and Shane decide to fake date for her so that her ex-boyfriend can get the idea that she's moving on and for him to make his ex-girlfriend jealous. So we've got fake dating which is one of my favorite tropes. I like rivals to lovers or enemies to lovers when there's a bit of banter but I don't quite like really intense bickering. So while some of this was quite fun some of it was a little bit strong-willed which I didn't love. This book also tackles some quite sensitive topics such as domestic violence so that is definitely something to bear in mind if you do think that you're going to give this one a read. I liked this book as I said some of the banter was quite funny and I would say I liked the characters although I found them really annoying in places and I would say it's probably my least favourite L. Kennedy book that i read. It could be that I just didn't gel with this one unfortunately. I did still give it a three star which isn't a bad rating for me and I think I still will definitely pick up the other books from L. Kennedy because you know like I said it just maybe was the characters that I just didn't gel with this time round. And then yesterday so Sunday night I started reading Only When It's Us 
by Chloe Lees, which is the first book in the Bergman Brothers series. This is the beautiful Illumicrate edition. This also have that same rivals, enemies to lovers, with the kind of the bickering, which as I said, isn't really my favourite. It is quite extreme in this. He like pulls her hair and I'm just not really a fan of that. I thought that was a little bit extreme. I do quite like the characters within this though. And it also tackles some quite sensitive themes. One of our main characters is Steph and our female main character, I think she might be on the autistic spectrum or I think she might have quite severe anxiety. There is a bit at the front that tells you about trigger warnings, but it also says it's full of spoilers. So I haven't actually read that. But what I do really like is it does tell you about trigger warnings if you are interested. Each chapter has a song title. Which, so if you wanted to go away and listen to the playlist and get the vibes of this book, I think that's such a cute touch. So this one follows Willa and Ryder. So Willa is falling behind in her business studies class because she is a soccer player, meaning that she cannot attend all of her classes. But because of her anxiety, she's not able to ask the teacher for help. So he pairs her up with Ryder and she can't understand why Ryder just automatically gets all of the notes for the class. She thinks it's really unfair. So they sort of develop this rivalry bickering situation. And then of course, their teacher pairs them up for a project. So they have to work quite closely together. What Willow doesn't realise though is that Rye has difficulty hearing and I'm only roughly on the 100 page mark. I can see a little bit of the romance creeping in, which is really sweet. I quite like how the romance is going. Like I said, I'm not really a fan of the intense bickering and the sort of like the physicality of pulling her hair and things like that. But I do think the romance is quite sweet. I also think the representation is fantastic so far. So I'm really intrigued to see how this book develops. I also got my Fairy Loot copy of Ruthless Vows today, which I've been waiting for for ages. And I'm so, so excited to have it in my hands. So I think once I finished Only When It's Us, that is definitely going to be my next read. <laughs> It's now Wednesday. Apologies for being absolutely rubbish at updating the vlog this week. I don't know. I don't know why. It's just been one of those weeks in work and just outside of work. It's just been one of those weeks, so apologies. But I do have a couple of reading updates for you. So I have now finished Only When It's Us. I ended up giving this one a 3.5 star. I did end up enjoying it. I didn't think it was anything particularly special in terms of romance. That being said, I do think the representation within this is really good in terms of, like I said, I think it's got some autistic representation as well as a main character who is death and that's not necessarily something that I've read about before so it was really great to see that representation. I do stand by what I said previously in regards to I'm not sure the bickering slash pulling of the hair was my cup of tea. It just reminds me of, you know, when you're on the playground and it just felt very juvenile, you know, a boy's mean to you because he secretly fancies you. So yeah, it just wasn't my cup of tea, but I think I am intrigued to continue on with the series, especially if there are different tropes in the different books. If you're not aware, this is the Bergman Brothers series where each book I think follows a different brother and there's a different love interest. And so there'll be different tropes and things like that. So I'm intrigued to read another book from that series and see if I get on any better. And then last night I absolutely devoured Ruthless Vows. I'm so so happy to have this in my hands. This is the beautiful Fairy Loot edition. I've been waiting for this for what feels like ages. I think this book was released in December and I've been waiting for the Fairy Loot edition. I kept telling myself I didn't need to buy another edition and I just wait for this one. But we're now in May so it feels like I've been waiting for ages. I ended up giving this one a four star. I didn't love it quite as much as Divine Rivals. I found it a little bit slower in places and I did find that it was a lot heavier in terms of the fantasy element. But although what I will say is I still absolutely love these characters. I love the love story. I was absolutely rooting for them. And it does take quite an interesting turn in the second book. I'm so happy to have read this and would definitely recommend the Letters of Enchantment series if you haven't read it yet. I know it's quite popular, so I know quite a lot of people will have read it. But if you haven't, I'm definitely one of those people that would 100% recommend. I'm not entirely sure what my next book will be. I have a strong feeling it might be Can't Spell Treason Without Tea. I absolutely think that that could be a really fun read and also nice and cosy. It's been a little bit chillier here in the UK during this week. It's been a little bit grey and miserable, so 
I think a nice cozy fantasy could be quite a good pick. The other thing I wanted to come on and talk to you guys about is that I got a parcel from Waterstones. I'm trying to make sure it is the correct way around and I'm not accidentally showing you my address, but I thought that we could open this one up and see what it is together. I'm pretty sure that it's some sort of pre-order as I haven't really ordered anything else. And it's also quite thin, so I'm guessing it's probably a paperback. Oh, okay, so it is Twelfth Night by Alexine Farrell Formuth. So this is actually the same author as Olivia Blake. This is just her other name. I think this might be her actual name. I'm not entirely sure. Olivia Blake is the author that read the Atlas series. So the Atlas Six, the Atlas Complex, and I can't remember what the other book is but they wrote that series and they've also released some YA novels. I've read the other YA novel that they released, which was called My Mechanical Romance, I think. And it's all about robotics and it's quite cool. I really did enjoy it. It was quite a short read and I read it on the train home from a work trip up to Manchester. It was the perfect amount to read on that trip and I did have a good time with it. So I'm excited that I finally have this one in my hands because I think this one is all around role playing or role playing games. So I thought I would read you out the synopsis in case you are interested. Viola and Jack do not get along. Popular Jack Arisno is the worst student body president Viola Reyes has ever seen and his lackadaisal attitude is just one more thing on V's long list of things to be annoyed about. Her only escape, the online role playing game Twelfth Night where she creates a masculine alter ego in order to be taken seriously in the gaming world. When a football injury leads Jack to start playing Twelfth Night 2, their worlds are set to collide, and as it becomes increasingly difficult for V to hide her true identity, Jack might be falling for her offline. I just think it sounds really cute, and I'm really intrigued by the gaming elements, so yes, definitely want to pick up this one soon. Hi guys, it's now Thursday, and I'm filming this on my lunch break. I don't actually have a reading update for you, Last night we ended up watching the new Hunger Games film, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snake, which I thought was okay. It was quite interesting finding out about Snow. I absolutely hate his character in the other Hunger Games films, but I think that is kind of the point. And I found it quite interesting watching him become what he is in the other Hunger Games. There was a surprising amount of music. I knew there was gonna be some music having seen some of it on TikTok, but I didn't quite realize how much music was in that film but yeah I would say it was good not as good as the original Hunger Games films but I would definitely recommend watching it if you are a fan of the originals although I don't think you necessarily have to have watched the original films in order to watch this I think you just get a little bit more out of it being able to see some of the easter eggs that they throw in there So currently on my lunch break, I am in the Fairy Loot queue, waiting to try and get the Fairy Loot edition of When the Moon Hatched, which is absolutely beautiful. So fingers crossed I can get a copy. I also got a couple of Fairy Loot packages this morning. So I thought we could unbox them together. And so the first one feels very heavy. So I'm very intrigued to see what's inside this one. Oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. It's my replacement copy of the Fairy Loot edition of Lady Midnight, which has the amazing stenciled edges my copy that arrived was slightly damaged so I contacted Fairy Loot just, just to ask if there was anything they could do and they said that they would send me a replacement so I'm really happy to have this and then the other one feels considerably lighter so it'll be very interesting to see what this one is ah uh, okay so this is the Fairy Loot edition of ASAP by Axie O it's got some really cool holographic foiling which I can't remember whether I knew about or not but that looks so beautiful we've got some really beautiful edges and then this is the back. I absolutely love the naked hardcover. I think that is so beautiful. And also the spine is holographic, which is so cool. There isn't any character artwork on the end pages, but it is signed. And then it's a similar design on the back. I'm so happy to have this in my collection after managing to get the Fairy Loot edition of XOXO, which is the first book within this series. I got that in their past box sale and that arrived very recently. So I'm excited to have this one as well and be able to read both of those books. It might be kind of fun to maybe read both of them in one go on maybe a weekend or something like that. So yeah, really happy to have these within my collection. Hi guys, welcome to our kitchen. The first time I 
I've ever filmed in here and it is very echoey but tonight I intend to do some baking and I thought I could take you along for the journey and see how we get on. It's the first time I've baked since we've moved house so first time using our new oven so it will be interesting to see how I get on. So tonight I'm intending to bake this Biscoff loaf cake so hopefully it turns out nice because I absolutely love Biscoff. Saturday. Apologies for being the world's worst vlogger again. I'm not too sure how this vlog is going to turn out if I'm honest. So I think the last clip that I filmed with you is that I finished my cake. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Tim's friends are down for the weekend. So we spent Friday night watching Summer's Games Fest, which was okay. Sadly, there weren't that many games that were appealing to me, which is a little bit disappointing, but I'm hoping that there will be some soon. We also played some drinking games and had a KFC, which was a lot of fun. I would like to read some more this weekend, but I don't know how much it's gonna be possible with a house full of boys, but I will try and keep you updated. Monday apologies for not updating the vlog as I said in my last clip Tim had some friends staying over the weekend so whilst it was a really fun weekend I didn't get any reading done as you can imagine we did a lot of drinking and drinking games we also ate out quite a lot and so I had a lot of good food I also did some editing yesterday and played a lot of sims which was really fun so not a lot of reading done so apologies hopefully this vlog has still been all right and hopefully you still have enjoyed it but I thought I'd come on here now just to wrap it up but before I do I thought I would share with you that I received a parcel through from Fairy Loot that I thought that we could unbox together oh okay so it's the Fairy Loot edition of Evocation by S.D. Gibson if you're not aware S.D. Gibson is the same author that wrote A Dowry of Blood and Evocation I read Evocation not so long ago and I thought it was okay it wasn't as good as I thought it would be or hoped it would be but I'm still quite excited to read this as I think it looks absolutely beautiful so this is the fairy loot edition so we've got some beautiful foiling we've got some beautiful edges this is the back with some more foiling the naked hardback looks absolutely awesome look at this and then this is the spine and the back we've got some really cool end paper artwork and we've got some different end paper artwork at the back it's also signed by the author and in terms of the synopsis of this one deep in the forgotten hills of massachusetts stands saint perpetua's college isolated and ancient it is not a place for timid girls here secrets are currency ambition is lifeblood and strange ceremonies welcome students into the fold on her first day of class, Laura Sheridan is thrust into an intensive academic rivalry with the beautiful and enigmatic Carmilla. Together they are drawn into the confidence of their demanding poetry professor, D. Lafontaine, who holds her own dark obsession with Carmilla. But as their rivalry blossoms into something far more delicious, T Laura must confront her own strange hungers. Tangled in a sinister game of politics, bloodthirsty professors and dark magic, Laura and Carmilla must decide how much they are willing to sacrifice in their ruthless pursuit of knowledge. Oh, I am so excited for this one. It's definitely giving me Dark Academia vibes. I'll be interested to see whether this is Carmilla from Dracula. So yeah, really excited to read this one maybe during September or spooky season. So there you have it. That is the end of this week's reading vlog. Like I said, apologies that there wasn't that much reading happening last week, but hopefully you did still enjoy it if that is the case please remember to give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in my next one thanks for watching bye guys Bye.